now I want to look at combining a few things here where basically um, where I'm trying to kind of say what does the unemployment rate really tell us so as I'm making this lecture right now the unemployment rates approximately um, the unemployment rate is approximately um, equal to about 4.2 percent. So what does that mean? Does that really mean that um, only 4.2 percent um, of the total people in the U.S. are not working? Well, we know that already is not the case because there's a sizable number of people who are lazy, are rich, or for whatever reason are not working. But we can also look at this in a few other ways. One, would be that there are those who are discouraged. So discouraged workers are able to work, they are willing to work, but they're not looking. So what that means then is that to the extent that an economy has discouraged workers, um, it tends to lower the unemployment rate. So what you see, if you look at the data, is that the unemployment rate actually starts to uh, reach its highest point just when a recession has ended, primarily because that's when the people actually start looking for work is when things actually get better. So you tend to have more discouraged workers the worse the recession is. Also, The unemployment rate, so basically here we're talking about things that, we're talking about things that are not in the unemployment rate, where those who are underemployed, meaning either you're not getting enough hours, or you're working at a job where you are overly qualified, uh, right, so I am obviously a professor of economics. That doesn't stop me from getting a job at Target. In both situations, I count as employed. But we could clearly say that maybe my skills would be better used uh, teaching this course rather than being a greeter. Um, also, it could be the case that so I'm a greeter at Target, but I only get 20 hours a week because that's all my employer gives me. That would obviously hurt me. Um, financially, and it would say something about the weakness of the job market, but I would still be counted as employed. So you're not seeing those kinds of things in the 4.2%. In the 4.2%, you're not seeing discouraged workers, and mm. you're talking about people who are possibly doing things who are counted as employed, even though um, they're not being able to do as much as they possibly can. Now, the primary way that we are measuring Let me kind of simplify this as, how do we find out where everyone is in that big chart? Uh, what we do is we tend to take a survey. It's basically called a, um, a current population survey. Basically, we take a survey of all the people um, in the U.S. We don't, we're not asking everyone, but we're going to ask a subset of those people, and we're going to ask them questions that allow us to categorize where they exist. Um, if you didn't do the current population survey, the other way you could do it is with something called the establishment survey. And in the establishment survey, instead of asking people, we ask businesses, how many people are you hiring? So it's just a slightly different way. And we do calculate both, and they give us different understandings of things. What this all leads to is our general then criticism of the unemployment rate. The general criticism of the unemployment rate is that um, essentially it most of the time tends to understate the actual problem. 
And the primary way in which it does it is actually with these two characteristics here, is that we have college graduates doing menial jobs that did not require their degree, or people not getting the hours that they require. They're counted as employed, and even if you look in Hawaii, right now the unemployment rate is um, almost 2%. Meaning everyone seems to be working, but obviously people aren't getting paid quite a bit. And then finally, we see that the unemployment rate differs greatly across um, categories within the population. So I'm just going to look this up here as I'm um, lecturing here. Um, I'm just looking on the Federal Reserve Economic Database, and let's just start with um, race. So by race. Mm. Let's just look at this one here. So the unemployment rate right now among African Americans is 7%. The unemployment rate for Asians is 3.5%. The, I'm not going to do all of these here. Um, for whites, or Caucasians, if you want to be formal here, it's 3.7%. And then finally for Hispanics, Hispanics and Latinos is 5.1%. So why is that? Why do we see these differences? Um, it's not what you think. Um, it's not, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sure it exists, but it's not necessarily discrimination. Uh, there's a host of reasons why people are unemployed. Um, for instance, let's just take a very innocent example. It could be that the hiring manager is colorblind, meaning they don't care whether you're green, purple, um, what color you are in terms of race. But if you can't get to the job reliably, I'm not going to hire you, which is actually on the mainland what if, um, happens for many African Americans is that um, you find individuals living in the city center, but the jobs are in the suburbs, and there's no way for them to get from one location to the other. Um, and um, for Hispanics, it's not just our generalized notions. We're not just generalizing here and saying, ah, you know, um, <coughs> Maybe, you know, like we live in an era where maybe we'd say, ah, the, you know, Hispanics don't have, um, you know, maybe um, enough education or maybe we have, um, you know, questionable legal documents or kinds of things like that. Um, that's not generally the case, right? As these are generalizations. These are, you know, even racial, racial stereotypes, which aren't necessarily true. Um, Hispanics could have the same issue of jobs being low, uh, being placed somewhere different, but you could also have other issues, right? African Americans, Hispanics um, have other issues such as how do we finance childcare um, if we don't have a reliable, um, you know, babysitter? How can we st um, start working at a job? It also has to do with differing levels of education, that we know that Hispanics and African Americans have lower levels of college degrees, and what we see, I'm just typing in our unemployment rate for those with a college degree, that the unemployment rate for those with a college degree is 2.2%. So the extent that which we think that African Americans or Hispanics don't have a college degree, then um, for, um, 
for high school graduates. <coughs> It's 4.3%. For less than a high school diploma, it's 6.5%. Now, that doesn't seem a lot, but at its peak during the last recession, it was as high as 15%. Kind of high. Which is why we generally say that it's um, essential that people graduate at least from high school, because um, most jobs at least require that. Um, and then finally, the unemployment rate among men. is 4.3%, and among women, among women is also uh, is about 4.2%, which is actually a little bit surprising. Usually women have a slightly higher unemployment rate um, uh, because of different child care issues and uh, the professions that are chosen. Um, this is a little unusual time period right here. Um, again, these are differences not caused by... Uh, discrimination necessarily, but it's a host of other factors. Also, it's not the case that you get a job because of the degree that you have. Rather, a degree could signal to an employer that you're a person that might have some smarts, that you um, might be a person who can stick to it, um, or you just are from a rich family that can afford that kind of thing.